We've spent some time looking at the framework of a life cycle assessment with respect to ISO standard 14040, as well as the requirements for carrying one out according to ISO 14044. So far this has taken the form of a few broad overview videos, with the occasional deep dive into important details. What will follow now is a second chapter, if you will, a set of videos that deals with each important phase of the LCA one by one, with the details you need to flesh out your assessment more completely. Before we do that, however, let's take a moment to formalize some of the vocabulary we've been using when talking about LCAs. It's about time we begin addressing all of the things I promised we'd address whenever I said we'll talk about this in more detail in a future video. And again, this will be the topic of a later video, which we'll address in a later video. And we'll revisit these concepts in a future video, a lot more extensive coverage in future videos. We will revisit this in a future video. Let's start to clear some of those details up right now with a look at some of the specialized terminology used in life cycle assessments. And just for your information, most of the terms we'll discuss today come from section 3 of each of the two documents. That's the terms and definitions section shared between the two. This part of the standards has been made freely available by ISO, so we'll put some links in the description if you want to see this in more detail for yourself. The life cycle is a collection of consecutive and interlinked stages of a product system from raw material acquisition or generation from natural resources to final disposal. This is a model used extensively in ISO 14000 systems. Given that this video series is about life cycle assessments, a life cycle is of course the central model that we're interested in. Cradle to Grave is a model for a time frame that represents the entire life cycle of a product from acquisition of raw materials to end-of-life disposal or recycling operations. Notice that the time frame just described when defining a life cycle has itself been given a special term. This underlines the importance of thoroughness and completeness when conducting an LCA. The target or intended audience is the recipients, readers, etc. for whom the report is created. A related concept is an interested party, which is an individual or group concerned with or affected by the environmental performance of a product system or by the results of the life cycle assessment. The life cycle assessment, or LCA, is a compilation and evaluation of the inputs, outputs, and the potential environmental impacts of a product system throughout its life cycle. This is the formal definition of the environmental management tool we have spent all of this time together learning about. So far we have tended to separate the LCA into distinct phases when we discuss the framework. The Life Cycle Inventory Analysis Phase, or LCI, is that phase of the life cycle assessment involving the compilation and quantification of inputs and outputs for a product throughout its life cycle. The Life Cycle Impact Assessment Phase, or LCIA, is that phase of life cycle assessment aimed at understanding and evaluating the magnitude and significance of the potential environmental impacts for a product system throughout the life cycle of the product. The Life Cycle Interpretation Phase is that phase of life cycle assessment in which the findings of either the inventory analysis or the impact assessment, or both, are evaluated in relation to the defined goal and scope in order to reach conclusions and recommendations. We have looked at these three major phases of the LCA study pretty extensively up to this point from the perspectives of the ISO 14040 and 14044 standards, individually. Moving forward, we will begin to explore them phase by phase with the benefits of insights from both standards at the same time. The reporting phase. The type and format of the report shall be defined in the scope. The results and conclusions should be complete, without bias, transparent, and sufficiently detailed. The report should allow the results or interpretation to be used in a manner consistent with the goals. The critical review 
is a process intended to ensure consistency between a life cycle assessment and the principles and requirements of the international standards on life cycle assessments. These two phases are deeply rooted in the LCA methodology set out by ISO in the two standards. They will also receive a video dedicated to them and their role as the final set of phases in an LCA, the ones that communicate to the target audience what we have learned about our product system and our study. What is a product system? A product system is a collection of unit processes with elementary and product flows, performing one or more defined functions, and which models the life cycle of a product. A product system is delineated by the system boundary, which is a set of criteria specifying which unit processes are part of a product system. A unit process is the smallest element considered in the life cycle inventory analysis for which input and output data are quantified. An intermediate flow is product, material, or energy flow occurring between unit processes of the product system being studied. An elementary flow is material or energy entering the system being studied that has been drawn from the environment without previous human transformation, or material or energy leaving the system being studied that is released into the environment without subsequent human transformation. This includes things like raw materials coming into the system across the system boundary, or else things like raw pollution leaving the system, again, across the system boundary. A product flow is products entering from or leaving to another product system. This includes things like intermediate products. Allocation is the act of partitioning the input or output flows of a process or a product system between the product system under study and one or more other product systems. If you recall the example of the hammer manufacturer from the ISO 14044 overview video, creating hammer handles from raw lumber and other inputs allows the handles to be allocated to another product system whether that system be the assembly of the hammers or another intermediate process entirely. Finally, due to the LCI phase involving extensive data collection, the models used to facilitate this phase are also packed with special terminology. A functional unit is the quantified performance of a product system for use as a reference unit. A reference flow is the measure of the outputs from processes in a given product system required to fulfill the function expressed by the functional unit. An impact category is a class representing environmental issues of concern to which life cycle inventory analysis results may be assigned. A characterization model is the mechanism by which LCI results that have been assigned to an impact category or impact categories are mapped to their respective category indicators. A characterization factor is a factor derived from a characterization model, which is applied to convert an assigned life cycle inventory analysis result to the common unit of the category indicator. That is, the common unit allows calculation of the category indicator result. A category indicator is a quantifiable representation of an impact category. ISO 14044 provides an example of this chain of information. In this case, for an impact category of climate change, the LCI results stand for the functional unit and the resultant reference flow. This might be something like the amount of greenhouse gas per functional unit. The characterization model might be something you develop yourself, or may be based on a well-established international dataset, for example, the IPCC's 100-year climate change baseline model. The characterization factor might be the GWP, the global warming potential for the target greenhouse gas. 
The resultant category indicator might be radiative forcing, which is the difference between incoming and outgoing radiative energy on planet Earth. ISO understands the complexity of life cycle assessments, and the resulting difficulties that might arise when trying to apply them to your particular sector or your specific product system. Further readings and practical examples are available if you're interested in exploring the application side of LCA in even more detail, with the help of a guided and informative structure. I don't know about you or if you enjoyed watching this video, but I enjoyed making it. It was a nice break from formality and procedure and structure, and now we're kind of more equipped with the tools and the knowledge that we need to move forward with LCAs with a much more in-depth approach. This will start with the next group of videos, each of which will address one of the major LCA phases and analyze them each from the perspectives of both ISO 14040 and 14044. The aim of these videos is to help you become fully aware of what an LCA looks like at this phase level, so that you feel more comfortable constructing and eventually executing your own life cycle assessment. I really hope to see you there. I'm Jamie Friend Ocumbo with EnviroPass. Thanks for watching.